and it's a pleasure to be here this morning. Um, uh, insurmountable uh, uh, barriers for... With respect to Saddam's arsenal of deadly weapons, our strategy will be simple. If he rebuilds it, we will come. We have the obligation to do this. We have the will to do this. And we have the forces in the region that are ready to do it, to destroy its weapons and account for its weapons of mass destruction. Continuously move the goalposts, undermine the potential for compliance. You don't we have see not that, moved. sir? We have not moved. Moreover, the sanctions regime that has already cost Saddam $120 billion will stay in place without change until there is verified compliance. And UNSCOM is the agreed instrument for achieving that verification. And we will continue the oil for food program to ensure that oils, that Iraq's oil revenue uh, is spent on people, not on arms. And why hasn't there been any movement on the Iraq Liberation Act, which promised $100 million in aid to the Iraqi resistance groups? Uh, and get, in, get them to work uh, in some concert. Um, indeed, lifting sanctions before there is verifiable compliance would be a sad day for the United Nations. We should not reward Iraq, Iraqi intransigence with new watered-down monitoring mechanisms designed to meet Saddam's demands. I think uh, we should uh, uh, reconsider what uh, ASCOM should do and uh, how to uh, uh, assess the uh, work of ASCOM and to, uh, uh, I think, uh, to make some new uh, solutions, find some new solutions. And what about the future of uh, Mr. Butler as chairman now? Uh, but I think that the uh, quite categorical in saying that uh, they don't see him uh, continuing as chairman. I don't think he should continue. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think that uh, there are now more concerns internationally about this American action that, than at any point in the past. And this, I think, uh, strongly supports Iraq's point of view that Iraq has done its part of the job and now it's up to the Security Council to honor its commitment.